engineers had designed it, designed it to withstand the impact of that of a direct hit of a plane. And actually, the, what caused the uh, World Trade Center to topple were the fire, the flames, the fire. Steel cannot withstand the heat of uh, intensive fire, and it was probably. Although I heard some people say that they thought it was um, explosions from bombs or whatnot, it was probably the jet fuel that created the explosion, created the fire, and it was the fire that actually brought the buildings down. The buildings performed reasonably well enough that a sizable number of people hope almost everyone could evacuate the building before the collapse did happen. Well, the planes, uh, as I understand it, had taken off from Boston, so they would have most of their fuel left. They're both uh, headed for, for far distant places. So in essence, then, those two planes, each one that hit, was a bomb. Was a bomb, yes. With all that uh, fuel. Yeah, the itself. plane itself, the impact of the force of the plane did not take the building down. There was no shear effect, and quite frankly, we were lucky in a lot of ways that the building did collapse straight down, almost imploded as if it was designed to implode that way. I have if to it, interrupt you just one second, please, Mr. Riccio, yes. just, uh, because we have Karen Hughes, President Bush's communication director, I think, is speaking to the nation. ...that continues to function effectively. We have a federal emergency response plan, and at President Bush's direction, we are implementing it. We began to implement it immediately after the first attack in New York this morning. We contacted American forces and embassies throughout the world and placed them on high alert. The United States Secret Service immediately secured the President, the Vice President, and the Speaker of the House, and they are all safe. They have also secured members of the National Security Team, the President's Cabinet, and senior staff. As you know, President Bush was in Sarasota, Florida when the first attack occurred this morning. Air Force One has now landed at Offutt Air Force Base in Omaha, Nebraska, and the President is in a secure location. He is in continuous communication with the Vice President and key members of his cabinet and national security team. Vice President Cheney and our national security advisor Condoleezza Rice are in a secure facility at the White House. I have just come from there. The Secretary of Transportation and other members of our White House senior staff are gathered at a command center there, and we are coordinating with other branches of our federal government. The Secretary of Defense remains at the Pentagon, and the Secretary of State is en route back to Washington from his trip to South America. President Bush is conducting a meeting of the National Security Council as we speak. They are meeting President Bush from his location and other members from different locations in Washington and other locations. As many of you have been reporting, the Federal Aviation Administration ordered all airports closed and all planes which were in the air were directed to land at the nearest airport. International flights were diverted to alternate locations outside of the United States. Transportation Secretary Mineta has directed the Federal Aviation Administration to suspend operations until at least noon tomorrow. So no airline flights will operate until at least then and until the FAA announces that operations will be resumed. Secretary Mineta has also issued orders controlling the movement of all vessels in United States navigable waters. The Federal Emergency Management Agency has activated eight urban search and rescue task forces in New York, and four of these highly trained teams are at work here in Washington at the Pentagon. Every federal agency has implemented continuity of operations plans to make sure the government continues to function effectively. While the markets closed today because of the situation in Manhattan, the United States financial system has continued to operate. Banks have been open all day. The Federal Reserve has operated regularly and continuously. The Department of Health and Human Services has mobilized medical personnel and supplies to provide help to local authorities who are working so diligently to respond and try to help the victims of these terrible attacks. President Bush has committed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to identify and bring to swift justice those responsible 
for these despicable attacks. The Department of Justice is setting up a hotline for families who fear that their relatives may have been victims of one of these attacks, and we will be announcing that telephone number shortly. Our fellow citizens and our freedom came under attack today, and no one should doubt America's resolve. President Bush and all our country's leaders thank the many Americans who are helping with rescue and relief efforts. We ask our fellow Americans for your prayers, for the victims, for their families, for the rescue workers, and for our country. Thank you all very much, and we will continue to update you as information is available and confirmed. All right, Karen Hughes, uh, the uh, White House uh, information. Uh, I asked, is this new information that's uh, come in since the attacks? Yes, it is. Is it specific in nature? Yes, it is. Uh, now, they're not completely eliminating the possibility that the attacks could have come from somewhere else, uh, not ruling out a Saddam Hussein-inspired attack or some kind of combination of Palestinian groups or some other combination, but good indications that people with links to bin Laden may have been behind the attack, and this is new and specific information, the officials say. They are also expressing uh, a certain amount of what I think is best described as anger uh, at the uh, comments by the Afghan government, by the Taliban government, uh, by Wakil Ahmed Mutawakel and uh, Mullah Omar, the leaders, uh, leaders over there who have commented today, in which they deny that Osama bin Laden has ever organized terrorism out of Afghan territory. Uh, one official calling that lies, 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 lies. And there's a certain amount of black humor uh, also now setting in as, uh, like other Americans, uh, uh, national security officials, intelligence officials, the first thing they felt when they saw what's happening and what we're looking at on our screen here was shock. But that is turning now to anger. And when I asked uh, whether uh, there were considerations being given to some sort of retaliation against targets in Afghanistan, uh, one official said, I wouldn't be planning your vacation there if I were you. David and Soar, just quickly, when they say, when they describe this uh, new and specific information, do you know enough about the kinds of sources or the kinds of the methods here that you could characterize where this information might be coming from or in what form? Well, they are not saying anything specific about uh, exactly what the nature of this information is, as you can expect, Judy. However, uh, when I talk to officials about the kinds of information that they would be gathering now, uh, they confirm that that information includes passenger lists of the aircraft that were down, uh, videotape at airports uh, from cameras, from uh, uh, security cameras in the airports. In a few days, they will have cockpit recordings. And uh, there's also a limited number of people who are suspected of belonging to terrorist groups who are known to be able to fly aircraft. And it looks as, at least, as if at least some of the uh, personnel involved in this plot must have been able to do that in order to carry off this uh, this set of attacks, Judy. Absolutely chilling uh, to hear you say that, uh, David, that there are people in these organizations, uh, and we now know it, who could fly commercial jetliners to do uh, what were this, these horrible, unspeakable acts that have been committed today in the United States. And now, as we look at uh, live pictures of New York City, where the smoke still billows from the location of the World Trade Center's buildings that were a hundred stories high, now completely decimated. Smoke coming from those buildings uh, six hours after the collapse of, of these twin towers. To Atlanta and to my colleague, Joey Chin. Judy, we want to bring our viewers up to date. Of course, it's just after the top of the hour, and uh, many people are probably tuning in at the top of the hour trying to understand the events of the day. So we want to bring you up to date on what we know, what we've been able to learn throughout the course of the day's events. There were two airliners, just about 18 minutes apart this morning, which crashed into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. At separate times, both planes apparently had been hijacked. One of them was an American Airlines flight. The other is believed to have been a United, a United Airlines aircraft. Now, the buildings collapsed not long after the attacks, and as you see, the people in the streets below just were rained on with the debris from these collapsing buildings. There are tens of thousands of people in these buildings on any given day at the World Trade Center, but officials say they do not yet know how many people may have been killed, and they do not want to venture a guess until they know more, until they have more solid information about what's happening. Again, 
the effort still to control the fire at the World Trade Center. Now, about a half hour after the second attack in New York, an American Airlines jet crashed into the Pentagon building. You see it there. Again, the plane was believed to have been hijacked as well. The building has burned throughout the day as firefighters have worked, trying very hard to get the blaze under control. Parts of the Pentagon building, you see it there, have collapsed. The casualties there are expected to be high, but again, we don't have any firm numbers yet on that. About the same time, a fourth plane was hijacked this morning. This one was believed to be a United flight from Newark, New Jersey, bound for San Francisco, and then it crashed in western Pennsylvania, about 80 miles south-southeast of Pittsburgh. Again, CNN continuing to follow up on all fronts. We want to return now to New York and from his rooftop vantage point, CNN's Aaron Brown. Aaron? Joey, thank you. Uh, Shimon Perez, the Israeli foreign minister, has been active in Israeli governments uh, for as long as most of us can remember and has witnessed more of these terrorist attacks than any of us should experience. He joins us now to talk about this one. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Uh, Thank you. Before, before, sir, we get to any of the specific questions, let me just ask you uh, first, if I may, for a reaction to what has taken place here. Our heart is with America, and our heart is with the thousands of families that have lost their children, their brothers, mothers. For Israel, it's a day of mourning. We announced that tomorrow the whole nation will be mourning. And I'm sure that as bitter and painful the event is, the only one that can save humanity from this terrible danger is the United States of America. It was not an attack only upon America, but an attack upon civilization, an attempt to introduce the rules of jungle in our life, not to permit people to fly freely, to walk safely, to be assured at the places they live. It is like a declaration of war or an introduction of a terrible arm, and we have to draw all the conclusion fully, uncompromisingly, and right away. Sir, you have been a soldier, uh, a leader of a country, you have been privy to some of the most uh, detailed intelligence reports there are out there. Are you surprised by the sophistication that must have been at play to carry out these attacks? It's a sophistication of the most evil kind. You know, only evil people can arrive to such a sophistication. And the measures must be radical as the evil itself. I think what should be done is to identify every country that hosts or supports terror and declare those countries as terrorist countries. I think there must be a call to all religious leaders, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, to condemn fully, without an excuse, all the suicidal bombers, suicidal persons, who in order to kill others, they kill themselves. It's against the basis of our life. It's against the gospels of every believer. And then again, we have to organize ourselves globally because we are going over from a world of enemies where you have had armies to face them to a world of global dangers that we don't have yet neither a strategy nor an army to stop it. We have to get ourselves organized properly and fully and immediately. Mr. Foreign Minister, I, I, I hope you'll answer this. I, I, let me ask it anyway. Uh, did the government of Israel have any intelligence uh, prior, any indications prior that something like this might happen? Not specifically. We have had warnings and there are all the time warnings. But we know, and all of us are aware of some of the addresses from where terror can origin. But anyway, I don't have any specific information, and I wouldn't like to blame anybody without full knowledge. I understand that, and let me then, just for the record, ask the, the logical follow-up, which is, since the attacks themselves, has the Israeli intelligence 
picked up any information that suggests who might be involved in this? The, any information we shall have, we shall hand over immediately to our American friends. And we also send right now, you know, a plane with our rescue team, which is already on the way. Whatever we shall be able to do, we can do. In order to be of help, we shall do, we shall do it full-heartedly without any reservations. Permit me to say that today each of us feels American, like an American, with all the seriousness, all the pains, and all the determination. Sir, do you have any doubt in your mind that the root of this attack on the United States today, the root of it took place in the Middle East, that the events in the Middle East, the organizations in the Middle East, do you believe that to be the case? I think we have to bring an end to the conflict in the Middle East, but you know there were already acts of terror in the United States disconnected from the Middle East, and there are in many other places the same story. We have to put an end to terror because it's a danger to every person and every country, no matter where it is. So the reasons are important, but the attraction to use terror in order to kill, in order to threaten, is existing everywhere. It's not connected to a specific case or specific place. Sir, thank you. Shimon Perez, the Israeli Foreign Minister, a long time Israeli leader in any number of governments, joining us from Jerusalem tonight, where it is a little bit after 11 o'clock, about 10 minutes after 11. Thank you, sir, for joining us. We are getting information now that one of the other buildings, Building 7 in the World Trade Center complex is on fire and has either collapsed or is collapsing. And I, I, you, to be honest, can see these pictures a little bit more clearly than I, but building number seven, one of the buildings in this very large complex of buildings that is the Trade Center, there were, the, there were and that is the right way to put it, there were the two towers but then there are a number of support buildings around it, uh, retail spaces, restaurants, office space, garages. Uh, the trains come in from uh, New Jersey, bringing commuters, taking commuters back, come into the complex that is the World Trade Center. And now we are told that there's a fire there and that building may collapse as well as you can see. Um, we can see as we look now back downtown uh, we can see the billowing smoke. Um, it is extraordinary to us, I guess, is how long this scene has gone on. The smoke has, has not cleared at all. It has not lightened at all. There was that horrific moment when the towers collapsed. And then we've been in this sort of situation ever since. As the fires continue to burn, Rose Arce, uh, one of our uh, producers who has been slowly and diligently making her way to the building described the fires that she saw in the area of the of the towers themselves and clearly those fires continue to burn at about 4:15 eastern daylight time today in an unbelievable and awful scene in new york judy aaron uh uh for those of us who don't know that area of lower manhattan uh, you are uh, explaining something that is important because uh, i think there, the belief had been that there were just the two towers but you're now telling us there that there are several other buildings that make up the complex of buildings and as aaron is just saying and we're hearing for the first time one of these support buildings is on the verge of collapse if it has not already collapsed it looks to me uh, as it may to Aaron as well with these live pictures that that smoke is so bla black that it may be the result of a fresh part of this terrible disaster but uh, it is only speculation at this point we evidently don't have anyone on the phone down there that we can get to right this moment but of course when we do we will um, we will tell you what is going on we do know that every effort is being made by New York emergency authorities to get people out but you also heard our producer, Rose Arce, say not too long ago that even the emergency personnel cannot get close because debris is falling at a steady rate within a two-block radius around the Trade Center. And even their, their uh, 
most uh, heartfelt efforts to get in there and rescue people. They just can't do it because the risk is too great. We're going to continue to, to watch this uh, horrific scene in New York City uh, as we um, bring you uh, up to date on what has been happening here in Washington. Uh, the Congress would have been in session today. In fact, it, uh, uh, it was gavel to order this morning. Uh, at least that's my understanding. But, uh, but members of Congress, uh, after these buildings were hit, were quickly evacuated. And uh, some of them have been gathering. There was, was report not too long ago that at 6 o'clock today, Eastern Time, that there would be a conference call of the congressional leadership to assess uh, the, the uh, catastrophe uh, of today and to consider when the United States Congress should meet again. As of now, the Capitol was largely evacuated. CNN's Kate Snow is at a location near the Capitol, and she's been talking uh, constantly to uh, members and to other to members of the staff. Kate, what are you learning? Judy, we are still under a lockdown at the Capitol. We've been told that Senator Lott and Senator Daschle would like to call the Senate back into session this afternoon. They would like to do that. Whether that's going to be a possibility is unclear at this point. Joining me here a couple of blocks away from the Capitol is Senator Bob Graham, Democrat from Florida and the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. You hold a position where you are in the know, Senator. Tell us, what do you know at this point about the events that have transpired today? Have you been briefed yet? Kate, we're about to have a briefing. The uh, head of the CIA has been briefing the uh, cabinet and the other uh, key officials to the president uh, this afternoon, and he's going to be talking to members of Congress on the Intelligence Committees and leadership shortly. It's been reported, uh, our David Ensor has reported, that there are strong indications that this could be linked to Osama bin Laden. Do you personally believe that that could be the case? Uh, Kate, I think it's premature to start naming a prime suspect. If you'll recall, after the Oklahoma City bombing, there was an early identification of, a, uh, of an Arab group that had done it, turned out to be false. Uh, let's withhold until we get a little more information. My own sense is that there are not very many groups around the world who have the capability of planning, coordinating, and executing a terrorist attack of this sophistication. You are constantly being briefed by the FBI, by the CIA, by the National Security mm -hmm. Agency. You, you are one of the senators that knows the most about our national security. Do you believe that there was any advance warning of this attack? No. If, if there had been advance warning, uh, there would have been steps taken to have interdicted it. Uh, there had been a general uh, threat warning that uh, there was a greater likelihood of some terrorist attack somewhere in the United States, but it was not at a sufficiently uh, detailed level to allow for some response. And when was that general uh, warning? Early in the summer, there was a, an, a general announcement of an increase in uh, threat level for terrorists. And were there changes made then to yes. our security? Uh, tell me about that. Yes, th there, were, there were general uh, steps taken uh, in terms of our intelligence uh, gathering, particularly related to those that we uh, had the highest level of uh, suspicion, uh, greater security at key vulnerable uh, areas, and I'm certain uh, that the military was uh, placed at a somewhat higher level of alert. Were you then surprised as you sat in your office, you told me you were here this morning, you were yeah. on Capitol Hill when the first word started coming down about what happened in New York. Were you surprised? Well, the answer is I, I was shocked at what actually happened, but the extent of it, the, the, the gruesomeness, the audaciousness of this kind of, a, of an aerial attack against uh, some of our best known symbols of America. Uh, I was uh, not surprised that there was an attack, was surprised at the specificity of this one. Does the Senate now, to show that the Senate can get on with business and that the U.S. Congress has not been impeded, do you think the Senate ought to come back and get back to business to, to send that signal? Well, I think first, as all Americans, we need to extend our sympathy to the families that have been so tragically affected by this. We, we also need to send a signal to the world that a group of terrorists cannot intimidate the greatest democracy uh, in the history of the globe and that uh, we will continue to carry out our responsibilities. And at this briefing, you told me within the hour, before 5 o'clock Eastern, you expect to talk not only with intelligence, FBI, but also with 
your colleagues, the leadership, yeah. and I under understand some decisions are going to be made about how to proceed from here. Well, I think what we'll be getting at this briefing uh, is some more detail as to what happened today. But there clearly are some things that uh, we have known that uh, need to be undertaken for our long-term protection. For instance, we need to make a greater investment in human intelligence. That's old-fashioned spies that can get close uh, to a terrorist, find out what their intentions and motivations are. We need to see that our technical ability to gather information stays as world-class uh, as it has been for the last 50 years, uh, and we need to close the gap between the amount of information we gather and that which we're able to analyze and convert into useful intelligence. Okay. Senator Bob Graham, Democrat from Florida, the chairman of the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee joining us here. He's about to receive a briefing, Judy, and we will get back to you with word when we know more from here. Judy. All right, Kate, we've been listening closely to what Senator Graham was saying, and I would just uh, remind everyone if uh, they haven't already uh, taken note of this, uh, that this week is actually the anniversary of the Camp David Accords. Those took place back in 1978, 23 years ago. Uh, over a period of about a little more than a week uh, between September 5th and about the 17th. This was the framework for peace in the Middle East, an agreement between Israel and Egypt that many of the more hardline Arab states said they would never forgive uh, Egypt uh, and, and certainly Israel for doing this. They felt betrayed by it. And there are those today suggesting perhaps that had something to do with the timing, although at this point it would be purely speculation uh, to say one way or another. You're continuing to see pictures of the terrible devastation in New York City uh, in the aftermath of the two airplanes that flew into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. There are adjacent buildings, part of the World Trade Center complex, that are still very much uh, uh, at risk. Uh, one of these buildings may have uh, collapsed or may be in the process of collapsing. Our Aaron Brown, back to you in Manhattan. Judy, thank you. Jim DiStefano is a structural engineer he knows about big buildings and what happens in these sort of catastrophic moments. He joins us from Deerfield, Connecticut on the phone. Um, Jim, the, the, the plane hits. What, I, I, and I hope this isn't a terribly oversimplified question, but what happens to the building itself? Well, it's a structure. Yeah, it's a tremendous impact that's applied to the building when a collision like this occurs. And it's clear that that impact was sufficient to do damage to the columns and the bracing system supporting the building. That coupled with the fire raging and the high temperatures softening the structural steel uh, then precipitated a destabilization of the columns and clearly the columns buckled at the lower floors causing the building to collapse. So it, it is a combination of, as, as we see again, this extraordinary shot of the second plane hitting the tower it is a combination of the impact of the plane itself and then the fire that ensues that causes these, I don't know, are they called beams to buckle? It's the columns. The vertical elements are columns, and those are the elements that are holding the, the whole building up. And those are the critical, vulnerable elements that uh, clearly failed in a buckling mode uh, from the high temperatures and the damage from the impact. Now. I don't, I'm not asking you to assign any blame to anyone about anything here, but, but just give me an idea if, in fact, you can design these buildings in such a way uh, so that it does not, this sort of thing does not happen even in a catastrophic event. Well, it's very difficult when you're designing a structure like this to imagine all the scenarios of things that might occur to the building during its construction. It's my understanding that when this building was designed, one of the criteria that it was designed for was a direct hit from a 707. Um, clearly, planes are larger today, and it wasn't considered the effects of the, the aftermath fires and high temperatures um, that would have been applied to the structure subsequent to the collision, as we saw today. And uh, to the best that, that you can, give me an idea of how long it will take for that building to be safe to go into because what we know is there or what we believe at least are there are still people trapped in there uh, the mayor talked about a week that this rescue operation is going to take uh, is that realistic 
Uh, I think it's, it's very realistic that uh, what we've seen in other collapses uh, like uh, L'Ambiance Plaza here in Connecticut and the uh, Hyatt Regency in Kansas City and the Oklahoma City bombing, it takes a very long time to clear the rubble and find all the people that might be trapped underneath it. But at what point, what has to happen before it is literally safe to send someone into, into that space? Um, I don't know that it will ever be safe. I think okay. the rescue people that are in there trying to save people are very much at risk, as they always are in these kinds of disasters. That um, the structure is always, when you have a pile of rubble like this, the structure is always somewhat unstable. So those rescue workers that are in there um, are at some risk. That there's never a point where you can say this building is safe to walk into and start looking around. Jim, thank you. Jim DiStefano, a structural engineer, joining us from Deerfield, Connecticut, on the phone. Uh, we have, over the last six or seven hours now, shown you uh, some extraordinary pictures. Many of those pictures have come from the air. We have seen the plane hitting the tower. We've seen the tower collapse. In this day and age, lots of people walk around this city and every city, I guess, with uh, video cameras. And one of them today in lower Manhattan was Dr. Mark Heath. Uh, Dr. Heath kept rolling, as we say in the news business, and this is what he saw with as little commentary from us as possible. It's coming down on me. Here it comes. I'm getting behind a car. It's incredible. Okay, I'm gonna have to go find people who need help. So I don't think I'm one of them. You okay, sir? Okay. Can I just get a toot off your respirator? Yeah. Can I get a toot? I'm seeing a couple of clean breaths. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Back to you. hid behind. It saved my life. Yeah. Wait, maybe it was this one. All these noises, I think it, I don't know what it is. They say someone needs help. Yeah, Mike! Hey. Mike! Hey, hey. Mike, come over here! Okay. Yeah! Anybody need a doctor? Where are you? Don't have oxygen. Hey. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> you... Hello, Doc. Hey, that guy needs some oxygen. If someone can share it with him. 10-4. Thanks. So if 
fire to see some people who needed oxygen from the dust. You know, one trauma. Gonna go wash my eyes out. Yeah, that almost made it work. Looking north on the west side highway. You guys going in? Yeah. Come with you. You know, but I don't want to get too much closer because the more buildings that come down, then we're not going to help anybody. All right. I think we should. Yeah. Let's just. Yeah. Okay. Let's just wait right here. Let's just station up right here. Okay. All right. Why don't we set up? Can you hang IVs from this pole here? Okay. Okay. Yeah. We just heard another explosion. They're handing out gloves and masks. The consensus is it's too unsafe to go in there. Just gonna wait here until they bring some people out. Hooked up with some firemen with some first aid stuff. What do we do? You know what? Why don't we just set this up as a little mobile hospital unit right here, okay? Suggestion should we set up here for medical work? Uh, Think this is safe enough here? Those pictures shot by Dr. Mark Heath. We don't know much about Dr. Heath, but we, I think, can fairly say that he had extraordinary presence of mind uh, as he continued not only shooting those pictures but also offering assistance where he could. At one point, he uh, hid behind a car, tried to get into the car to protect himself from both the debris and the smoke that was building around him. Uh, the car was locked, he tried to break in, couldn't, and then hit his face in a medical bag, his medical bag, uh, all the while he kept shooting. A, a, a couple of things that you might have wondered about, uh, a couple of sounds, there was a chirping sound that you heard at various points in the tape. That is the sound of the uh, locator devices that fire men and women wear so that if they are lost in a fire, uh, their colleagues, their brother fire, brother and sister firefighters could get to them. And there was also a kind, what sounded to us at least, like a kind of whistling sound. That's the sound of respirators uh, that the firemen, the emergency service personnel and the rest uh, were using and offering to people who needed it. Um, our colleagues at CNN FN have, are reporting now that the stock exchanges, the uh, NASDAQ, the American Stock Exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, all, of course, closed today, will remain closed through Wednesday. So the stock markets, the financial markets in the country, and yet again, uh, we cannot recall anything like that ever occurring. Uh, perhaps it has, and we don't remember it, but we don't remember it. Uh, the stock markets, all of them, stay closed through Wednesday. Air travel shut down in the United States uh, until at least noon tomorrow, and certainly no guarantee it'll open after that. That affects, on an average, about a million and a half people every single day, 40 to 50,000 flights, all of them grounded. There were about 50,000, 50, not 50,000, there were about 50 planes in the air after uh, the FAA essentially locked down airports in the country. All of those planes uh, made it safely to destinations. Uh, we don't know they made it to the destinations they were headed for, but they were all able to land safely. CNN's Joey Chin in Atlanta.